Well, let's get started, everyone. We will try to analyze and dissect the issues from the 2019 elections, especially the outcome of the governorship elections, the balance of power, the gains, the losses, and the intrigues. Well, if you look at the electoral map and the political dynamics in the nation based on how the parties are standing and the controls they have on some of the states where elections held, 29 states held governorship elections, six of them had... Um, uh, elections concluded, I mean, not concluded, why one is suspended. In that sense, what it then means is that INEC is yet to decide on some of these states and when elections we hold to conclude the elections in some of these states, like Sokoto, uh, Adamawa, uh, and also in uh, uh, River State where election is suspended. So what will happen? How is the, the parties, how are they fearing considering what has happened? Uh, well, which of these parties that lost out, where are they gaining grounds? And some of the issues that came up, some are disagreeing. The PDP is protesting. The APC, uh, some governors of the APC met with the president at a villa today. What is the import of that meeting? Let's get talking, everyone. Uh, joining me tonight, Mr. Ken Okolubo, a political scientist and analyst and also a member of the People's Democratic Party. He joins me here from uh, Inland Lagos Studio. Thank you so much, Ken, it's for coming. It's a pleasure seeing you. It's been a while. After a while. <laughs> a long while. And from Abuja <laughs> Studio, he's a member of uh, the, he's a director, actually, of the strategic planning of the APC Women and Youth Campaign Council, Professor Usiji Medana. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Usiji Medana, for coming on tonight. Yeah, there he is. Thank you so much for coming on. Wow, Let's get started. It does look like, uh, maybe I should start with, um, with Professor Medana. It does look like things are not looking up very well for your party. Considering that in uh, about five or so of the states that elections are not concluded, the figures are not in favor of your party. In Kano, not exactly in favor of your party. In Sokoto, not exactly in favor of your party. Um, uh, and these are states that your party was controlling before the 2019 governorship election. Are things really getting out of hand? I show this shows the democracy, I, I think, is being threatened. If you look at it, it's just like, let me just put it this way. Uh, in a football match, you play uh, Champions League and uh, you win Champions League, you come to domestic politics, uh, domestic leagues, and you, you didn't fare well. So the truth of the matter, you see, we have said it before, and you know the phenomenon of the president, that is the, 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 the followership of the president, is different from that of the governors. And it's because we have gotten a change. Now we have moved from where we were to where we are today. In the past, you see there is no way you can beat a governor in his state somehow easily like that, or you can come very close in the way we have witness. So it shows that really the, the democracy or what we are having today, there are semblance of free and fair election in our, uh, in our democratic uh, experiment. And actually we are moving forward. This is a, something that we should commend all of us, where you see in a state dominance by APC and is struggling to, with the uh, opposition party. It shows that the professor, people where, they are aware so, now. The people sorry, can I may make it. The sorry, president professor. said in the campaign that, look, uh, the people should choose whoever they like and whoever they think can give them the good governance. And that is how it is. And we in the APC, we are looking at it now. There is going to be runoff. And they have to go back to the touring board. And they, 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 they have to think over one million times in a second. That is what the strategy is all about. The, the big question here is that uh, two weeks ago, the president won overwhelmingly in Sokoto, uh, in Kano State, for example. Uh, you look at the National Assembly election. It was, uh, in fact, your party defeated uh, a Kwan Kwan so, which is uh, somewhat a phenomenon in Kano State. And two weeks later, your party is uh, gasping for breath in that same Kano State in winning a governorship election. You have seen what is going on, and I think uh, even in the social media, I'm not going to say uh, things about who is the governor of Kano State, but Kano, you should just commend them for political awareness, not now. It has been pluralistic right from the First Republic. 
there was uh, uh, NEPU and NPC, and there was uh, PRP, and uh, in the Second Republic, I mean, and MPN. They were very strong. And this is the same thing that is playing back. Actually, it wasn't the issue of Konkoso. It was the issue of candidates. Uh, President Muhammadu Buhari and God overwhelmingly, let's say, uh, support in, in, in Kano State in the presidential election. And this is gubernatorial election. And the people of Kano State, because of their political awareness, they are coming out to vote for a governor, not for the president. This is to show that, yes, we are moving forward. There is serious awareness in the polity. There is serious awareness in our, uh, in our democratic experiment. All right, let me come to Ken. Uh, Ken, your party mm. is, uh, as perhaps, a lost Gombe state where he, yes. uh, he held firmly a, 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 pol a presidential aspirant, uh, the governor there, the incumbent governor. And your party is struggling in Sokoto state because the election uh, is a very tight race in, uh, in Sokoto state. Uh, one of the governors who left the APC, uh, from your own point of view, your party had said, look, in some of these states where inconclusive elections have been declared, that they should protest it. Uh, but this is not the first time we are seeing inconclusive elections. Is your party losing grip? Because it held about almost 15 or 16 states before this election. Or it's not looking to hold as much. But don't, don't forget that we had lost the Kitty and Ondo states coming into the election. So we're already coming from a position of a bit of disadvantage. But by the time the Sokoto governor crossed and the Binri governor crossed, we made up for a Kitty and Ondo that we had lost. Now looking at it from that perspective, you would agree with me that there was a lot of voter apathy and a lot of dissatisfaction with what had happened at the presidential election. But 3,000 votes, you say is negligible, but it's a lot in Sokoto State. And now, the fear is, in Benue, for example, you're talking about 80,000 votes. Out of the six states you've talked about, it's only in Plachi State that APC is leading. In the other five states of Adamawa, in Kanu, in Benue, in Sokoto, they are all PDP states that are leading. And so the fear is that these states are going to be isolated. Isolation was what happened in Oshun State. And when, the vote, when isolation happened in Oshun State, it was heavily militarized. There was a lot of security. And they were, the, the, the question is, are this federal government backed up security going to work but, in but favor the, of the, the APC in, can, the or the PDP. The political That's what you're going to ask yourself. The political interpretation mm. is that should your party lose at five of the states, what then becomes of it after losing the But we don't expect election. that we're going to lose those five states. For example, at Damawa, for example, Fintiri, Look at what happened Fintiri in is losing with 32,000 32, votes. Now you're talking about the cancellation. It's been a new, let's call a spade a spade. It was in we don't sure we heard about this inconclusive elections. No, not us, uh, alone. There's been inconclusive uh, elections when? in Kogi State, in Bayelsa State. In Kogi? Yes, there, uh, were, there were inconclusive elections in Bayelsa and Kogi. In Bayelsa and Kogi State. No, when I mean uh, Oshu, I, I'm talking about recently. That's what I'm trying to talk in this, in this uh, new trend. And the fear here is we are, uh, we are an endangered species because we don't have the federal might. We don't have the security. Yes, there's complaint from the APC and there's complaint from the PDP in the states that PDP have won and in the states that APC have won. But then again, look at it holistically, like you rightly said. He, I beg to correct him. Kwakwansu produced the governorship candidate, so he cannot divorce Kwakwansu away from the victory that Kanu is presently uh, showing in terms of strength in the PDP. But Kwakwansu could not say. Uh... Well, Kwakwansu could not win his senatorial. Uh, and again, seat. the presidential election. I won't speak for him because I did not, he has not really complained outrightly. But my party has kicked against it, and so they are challenging it, and that's another question for another day. But the important aspect here is that if you look at the trend, look at Bauchi, for example. Uh, Bala Mohammed, the former minister of the FCT, is leading a sitting governor who boasted that he won the last election with 300,000 votes, with 4,000 votes. And in that very local government, the Tafawa Balawa local government, that he said that he did not need, now happens to be the one that is going to be the decider of his fate. Let me pause so you. So that Let tells me you, you Ken, for a moment. that is a lot of challenge. Yeah, we'll go for a break. And yeah. when we come back, the dynamics, the gains, the losses, uh, who is gaining, who is losing, what, the, what becomes of the whole interplay after those elections are concluded and some of the underground work of some of these political parties involved in this election. We'll be dissecting that when we come back from this break, everyone. Tennessee.
Welcome back, everyone. Let's get back to the conversation. I have been speaking with Mr. Kendall Kolubo, a political analyst and a member of the PDP. And from our Abuja studio is Professor Usiji Medana, the Director of Strategic Planning of the APC Women and Youth Campaign Organization. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for uh, coming on tonight. Uh, let's get back to it and look at the map, uh, Professor and Mr. Okolubo. This is how it does look uh, 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 right, right now. We see uh, the orange color those are the states where the elections are uh, declared inconclusive. Sokoto, Kano, Bochi, Plateau State, Benue, and Adamawa State are uh, undecided just yet. But if you look at the map, uh, the colors in, in red shows where out of the 29 states of the Federation where the APC is gaining ground. And the green shows you the states where the, uh, the PDP is gaining ground. Almost all the states in the southeast have been won uh, by, the AP, uh, by the PDP. It does tell you one thing, that the PDP has held a stronghold in that region of the country, in the south-south. It's maintained that strong, except for Edo State. But if you look at it, from um, uh, the, the, the north Central, the APC has gained ground by uh, winning in Kwara State. If you look at and the margin may not be as much, but the significant effect of this is uh, it's changing political dynamics from the man who held sway in that state, uh, the Saraki, and now is gone into the APC hand. And if you look at the difference, it's 216,000. If you look at it here, uh, there is a very significant difference here, a uh, massive one, one over one million in the difference of vote. But let's look at what this all in the entire map. Um, Ken, you were talking about uh, what this means for your party. Yes. And if you look at what the inconclusive elections, uh, if you look at these inconclusive elections, the uh, possibility of your party winning any of this state, and if they lose, what does it mean for your party? Well, basically, what I, what I think is that we're going to win five of the states. I don't think we'll win Plateau because the difference in Plateau is 44,000. And the cancelled votes are 49,000. So it would be almost impossible for us to win Plateau. But Adamawa, Benue, Bauchi, Benue, we've already won. Adamawa. Not decided. You have not won it. We are losing with 80,000 votes. Just like I, I, I considered Plateau for the APC, I, I, I tell you that we are going to win Benue. So I will remove those two states. What about Kano? Kano, we are going to win Kano because the isolated word, the Gambawa word, is a stronghold of the PDP. Now you have Bauchi, we're leading with 4,000 votes. Sokoto, we are leading with 3,000 votes. Adamawa, we are leading with 32,000 votes. So it's between Bauchi and Sokoto that we're going to have a challenge because what we are asking is that let the elections in Sokoto and in Bauchi be free and fair because if it is militarized, if there is a lot of security intimidation, that's when we can have problems in Sokoto and Bauchi. Professor Medana, uh, coming to the conversation, do you agree with what Mr. Okolubu has said, uh, the possibility where you could win and where the losses uh, could come from? It has always been uh, the characteristic of a politician uh, to say that I'm comfortable I'm going to win so-so and so-so places. He has not looked at the dynamics of those places and what is going to happen. Uh, I just want to concentrate on one thing, and the issue where Mr. Okoyes was just saying, I had uh, my colleague there, he was trying to fault the the uh, inconclusiveness of the election and uh, how it happens and what happened. If we look at the electoral law, actually we'll see section 53 of the Electoral Act and uh, uh, subsection 2 and uh, 3, you'll see where the INEC has gotten its powers to exercise uh, all these kind of uh, issues when it happens. And if you now go back to section 76 of the Constitution, they have the powers to fix, and the, uh, fix the election and the mood of the elections. If you now uh, look at it from history. I think 26 April uh, 2011 in Imo states, similar things happened. You look at a lot of precedents that happened. What we are concentrating today, we said that the democracy is becoming more threatened and APC is assured of winning those places. We know there are a lot of things, factors that happen in Adamawa, in Kano, in uh, Sokoto, in uh, its internal kind of wrangling that happened. And I know APC is going to put its uh, house together and go back with those people that w felt maybe they, they had problem with the governors and it will be settled and APC is going to win those uh, places, I assured you. But 
let's uh, probably end the conversation in this manner. And perhaps I give Mr. Okolubo 30 seconds and you 30 seconds. So if you look at it, for example, and uh, look at what the interpretation of the map and the colors, uh, what it means and the, uh, the implications, politically speaking, uh, APC uh, holding on to 22 states before the 2019 elections. But it does not look like it may be having as much number. What does this mean for your party to close on the program? Professor Medana, in 30 seconds, please. Uh, I said, uh, let me repeat myself again. I think, Sean, you have not heard me very well. I told you that the APC is coming out, is going to win those states because if you look at what happened in Kano, it's not just about the factor of the governor or uh, Concorso's factor. The governor had problem with the party uh, steward. He has problem with a lot of people. And I think it contributed to that. The primary election, let me just put it this way. And there wasn't any cogent or uh, maybe uh, effort for people to come together and settle those issues. I know now definitely it's going to happen. They have to come back. They have to come back together, discuss those issues, map out strategies where and how it will happen. It's almost 21 local government that those elections are going to happen in Kano State. The same thing with uh, Sokoto State. The same thing in a, in, a, in a, uh, Plateau State. Jisha Plateau, there is the gap is wide. The same thing in Adama State. The same thing in other states, affected states. So we are going to see what is going to happen. Lovely optimism there. Let's uh, allow Mr. Okolubo to end the show for us. This is how it looks like for your party. Yes. Uh, out of the 29 states that you entered into, I mean, uh, for election, where elections held uh, on, uh, uh, on Saturday, and this is what we can come out of. Do you think that uh, this is good for you, knowing full well that you lost the presidential election and you've lo lost a lot of seats in the National Assembly too? Somebody sent me a tweet on my Twitter handle at Kenny Okolubo. He said, look, that I should watch out for what's going to happen because he was a bit aggrieved over the presidential election. He was predicting that we're going to have at least 18 states. We have nine states out of 22 states declared. I see us winning, I have predicted we're winning four already, and I said there'll be two that'll be, no, I said we're winning three outright, and there's going to be two that'll be a challenge, and I considered one for the APC. But for example, if you look at it, we worked very hard. In Delta, for example, I relocated for the past almost two months working for the elections. And even though you can see that there was a complaint in Delta, for example, the, the governorship candidate of the APC says 500,000 people were not accredited. If you remove 500,000 from the bulk of the votes, my governor still wins by over 200,000 margin. So what I'm trying to say is that if you look at all the states, or your Indugwebo, your Cross River, Imo, even Akwebom, Akwebom governor got 519,000 to 171,000. If you look at the complaints that Akwabi also brought, the local government he said there was 74,000 and 60,000 was recorded. If you remove all those votes, Udomi Wano still wins. So I am very convinced that by the time these elections are held, we will have a major gain. And that major gain will take us to 2023, which is what we are trying to achieve. All right. It's, a, it's an interesting one. So this is how the map is looking like for the PDP. Uh, but it, uh, it would not look like that for a long time, especially the electoral map looking like this. It will look with major colors at the end of the day. But that's where we draw the curtains of the program. And many thanks for talking to us, Mr. Okolubo and Professor Usuji Medana. It's a pleasure having you guys on the program. It's always today. my pleasure. Well, that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye-bye.